morning, ladies and gentlemen. Hello. Uh, it's a bit daunting to follow on from all the wonderful presentations that we've had so far and the interesting issues that have been raised. Uh, even more daunting to be doing this because, as Sarah explained at the beginning, Hewan, Hewan Japes, who was going to be doing this session, uh, is not able to be with us. Now, we decided that no one person could replace Hewan, so that's why it needs two of us, myself and John, uh, to stand in for Hewan. And actually, this is quite useful in a way because it highlights one of the themes that we want to talk about and, and to raise in this session that we're going to do together. Um, and the issue is to do with partnership. It's to do with working together. It's to do with the way in which people or organizations can come together to share in interests and to share expertise for development. Um, in, in, in a way, the story that we heard in the first session about the crabs and the eagle is actually very relevant to what we want to talk about here and what we want to raise here. You remember that the crabs, individual crabs, came together for common defense from the eagle. Now, we want to talk about membership associations. This is the theme uh, the, of, of this session. Membership associations and how they can come together, not necessarily for defense, although defense may be a part of it, but coming together to preserve and to develop their common interests. Um, and particularly in relation to quality and the, the idea of developing quality. So individual entities like the crabs who live a lot of their lives separately, feeding, looking after themselves, raising their families, doing whatever crabs do, find it useful from time to time to come together. And in the same way, schools who spend most of their time doing their own job, working in their own context, working with their own students, their own parents, their own staff, may find it useful to come together from time to time to develop common uh, interests, to further their common interests. And th that essentially is what a membership association is. It's an association of organizations, in this case schools, who are members of a common organization uh, which, which uh, uh, serves their purposes. And we want to look very briefly at how, how this can work in relation to quality and how this can relate uh, uh, in terms of partnership. And we want to do this by talking about something which happens in the UK as a case study, as just an example of how this can work in practice. Um, in India, this model may or may not be appropriate. That's not for us to say today. It's simply to present and raise, raise your awareness of a possible way of working together between, in this case, the British Council, on the, the left-hand side of the slide, the British Council as a quality standards, a quality assurance organization, and English UK, which is a professional membership association uh, of language schools in the UK, based in the UK. And they collaborate together in an organization, a subset organization, uh, which is called Accreditation UK. And uh, John is going to be talking a little bit more about Accreditation UK and how that works. But the important thing at this stage is that it is a partnership. It, it is an, a, a, a coming together of a quality standards focused organization, the British Council, and a membership organization, uh, English UK. I, again, in the, in, just in terms of a case study to set the scene for you to, give you, to tell you a little bit about how this works. And I, I just want to stress again, I'm not saying to you this is how things must work in India. It's simply to say this is how this works. Is it interesting? Is there anything we can learn from that? Well, English UK, as you can see, I'm not going to go through all the points which are on the screen, but English UK is a, quite a, a long-standing association. 
Uh, in its present form, it, it's been in existence since 2004, uh, but it, in 2004, two previous associations came together, and they go back quite a long way into uh, the history of uh, language schools in the, in the United Kingdom. So the, the professional association, the membership association, English UK, is interestingly enough, if you look at the third point, it is, it is a charity and a company at the same time. Now, in, in terms of British law, that is significant because it's able to engage in, if you like, charitable professional activities as well as commercial activities by being a company. And this is how, this is one of the features, one of the characteristics of this membership organisation. The, the other important thing to draw to your attention is the, the, the fact that the association, the, 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 the uh, English UK itself, is, has a strict code of governance. It is a formally constituted legal organisation which works according to where very well codified and very well defined practices. And I'll show you some of those in a moment. Why have the crabs come together? Is the interesting question. How does English UK, why is English UK there? Well, there are a number of purposes, some of which may be relevant in your context, some of which may not. But representation of the members to government, that's quite, interesting, that's quite important in the British context for language schools. Supporting business and development, marketing and promotion, professional development, CPD, and quality assurance. All of those things, the last one being done in, co in collaboration with uh, Accreditation UK, all of those reasons, all of those areas are important for the members. Together, they can do these things much more effectively than they can do them separately. Um, quality assurance through CPD, one of the main areas of work of English UK is to provide CPD, Continuous Professional Development, opportunities and pathways for its members and their staff and teachers. So you can see the range of things there that, that English UK provides. And the, the overall aim is to say, yes, we, we as, as, as English UK want to be able to provide quality, affordable training for ELT, ELT professionals of those schools which are members of the association. So together they can provide that, whereas for an individual school, it's difficult to muster the resources and the expertise to run the range of professional development activities which the membership association is able to do. You can see seven, uh, seven conferences a year, qualifications which the scheme, which the association uh, is able to offer, <sighs> publications. Uh, you can see the list there. And in fact, the detail of the list doesn't matter that much. The fact is that there's a wide range of CPD activities which the association is able to facilitate. I just want to pick up this point of governance because it's very, very important that a membership association like English UK is seen to operate in a transparent, clear, formal way. So this is not, an, an, a membership association like English UK is not a group of school principals meeting in a restaurant twice a month and talking about things. It is not an informal network. It is a formally constituted organization. And again, I'm not going to go through all the details of that that you can see on the screen, but that just illustrates that they have taken this very seriously, and it's extremely important that this is done so that the association, or the, not the, 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 the the, the group that English UK can say to its members and indeed to the outside world, we, we are operating in a formally constituted and effective way. Okay, I'm going to hand over to John now to talk a little bit about how the work of English UK ties in with Accreditation UK and how the quality standards and the quality 
is, is managed jointly. Okay, John, over to you. Great. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to talk a little bit more then about the other half of the, the partnership then, which is uh, Accreditation UK. Many years ago, in, in a previous existence, I used to work uh, in Accreditation UK. Um, as you can see there, um, that is what the mission of Accreditation UK is. Um, <clears throat> it's a quality assurance mechanism, as Keith was saying, and this is what it's about. This is what it aims to do. How does it do that? Um, I'm going to spend a little bit of time on this. So the Quality Assurance Scheme has a four-year cycle, and that four-year cycle is strengthened by two things, really. The first is a, a, a system of unannounced spot checks. So people, frightening people like Keith, who's the senior inspector, will turn up at a school unannounced and check that what they're doing meets the standards of the scheme. And also, which isn't on there, um, self-declaration as well. That's a, a, a fundamental part of what Accreditation UK is about in terms of ensuring standards, that uh, we ask schools to declare if they're doing anything different, what's changed. So within that four-year cycle, then there are two systems for ensuring that uh, standards are maintained across the four years. Um, it's a transparent kind of mechanism and that the reports that Keith and his team compile are published. So anybody, parents, students, anybody can see exactly the performance of the school in relation to the standards that are contained within the scheme. And in addition to that, um, and this is new um, to, compared to the time that I worked there, um, it also, the scheme, differentiates between providers through a system of areas of strength, so things that the school is good at, and through points to be addressed. And those are also in the public domain. In terms of the, the areas that the scheme covers, management, resources and environment, teaching and learning, welfare and student services, care of under 18s. And within each of those five standards, a little bit like you were saying about the parameters, the, 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 the indicators, um, within this scheme there are around 50 or so criteria that fit underneath those overarching standards. Um, and similarly to, to what Keith focused on, I think it's important actually to have a, a, a look at how Accreditation UK is, is governed. Um, and that's in line with reinforcing this idea of, of, of partnership that the, um, that the British Council, it's the British Council's name, which is on the line, as it, were, as it were. It's the British Council's reputation on which this scheme visibly rests. So for that reason, it's the British Council that awards accreditation. It's the British Council's logo that uh, uh, schools use to demonstrate that they belong to the scheme. That said, though, um, the, the governance is a, a partnership that incorporates a board, and the board is responsible for appointing Keith, basically, for, for appointing inspectors and chief inspectors. So there isn't a third party that's overseeing any of this. It's a, a relationship and a partnership which is based on two fundamental things. And the first thing, and I, uh, this, uh, you know, to exaggerate the importance of this, but it's a fundamental, it's based on trust. That's the first thing. And the second thing is based on a, a clearly 
defined and agreed structure as to how the, that partnership is to work. Okay. And what, what does that partnership deliver? Well, um, it's a, a global benchmark in English language teaching. It's standards which are revised every two years, which help to maintain the system in relation to the changing operating context. For example, if I cast my mind back to uh, 12 years ago when I was managing this scheme, some fundamental changes have taken place, and those changes have taken place because the context in which the members of the association are operating have changed. So there's a review process which ensures that the, the, the scheme uh, remains relevant to the institutions it serves. The other thing I think to point out really in terms of this partnership is that part of the, the, the structured agreement between the two, Federation UK and English UK, is that the inspection is completely and absolutely independent of the professional association. And that's an important point to make. And the other point to make, and this is the way that the professional association, English UK, this is the way that they are able fundamentally to promote their members as having reached a certain standard that in order to join English UK, you need to be accredited by the British Council. So in a way, a way of looking at it is that the, the British Council, through Accreditation UK, guarantees the quality of the membership of English UK. And I think that's probably the, 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 the last point that uh, we would like to leave you with, that this kind of partnership, and as Keith was saying, it, it's, it's a model that we are intimately acquainted with, and it's a model which works very well, and a model which is suitable to the context in which it was developed. So we, we're, we're putting that forward as an example that may have some resonance, some relevance here in India. Okay, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.